Hi there, I'm Kelmi and I'd like to welcome everyone to the second episode of my London recreation in Transport Fever 2. Today we will have a look at the North London line, especially the section between Hackney Wick and Hackney Central. That was a section I already uh, prepared off camera before I started the YouTube series. But I um, have some time-lapse videos of me extending this section of the new houses and some more detailing that I like to show to you today. So let's dive into this. In this shot you can see Hackney Central Station and the line crossing is the Leah Valley line that serves as a commuter line in the northeast of London and continues as the West Anglia main line towards Stansted Airport and Cambridge. You can see the footbridge connecting Hackney Down Station with Hackney Central. It is mainly served by Greater Anglia commuter rail services and the London Overground. The North London line is hosting two overground lines, both starting at Stratford and one going all the way down to Clapham Junction, while the other continues towards Richmond. It is also used by freight services as it connects the East Coast Main Line, the West Coast Main Line and the West Anglia Main Line, as well as the Great Eastern Main Line. It is fully electrified, the section between Stratford and Wilston Junction with overhead catenary and the section between Wilston Junction and Richmond and also the section towards Clapham Junction with third rail. The overground runs class 378's Capital Star rolling stock, which is a five car unit. These units are able to use both overhead wires as well as third rail as a power supply. Each of the two overground lines, the one that goes to Richmond and the one that goes to Clapham Junction, both run with a four trains per hour service, which means a frequency of seven and a half minutes on the main section. The part that I already detailed on this section goes from Stratford all the way up to Dalston Kingsland which is six station in total. The North London line is one of three lines that were part of the initial network when the overground was formed in 2006. Before that, the line was part of the Silverlink Trains franchise, which was mainly run by class 313 units and was known for its poor performance. Here I'm currently decorating the um, car park for the Tesco Express which is located there. Um, I'm, I'm planning to um, put down the actual Tesco Express store which was released a few weeks ago by James T85 Gaming. I had a look over the model, the model is quite nice. Uh, I polished it a little bit but it didn't need much polishing. So, uh, But I haven't loaded the mod yet into the game. I'm trying uh, for, for this playthrough, I'm trying to just load the mods that I am actually needing because every, mod, um, every mod adds quite a bit to the loading time and as I'm using this map um, for, for YouTube I'm using it for myself and I'm using it as a playground for my new mods um, I'm doing. Uh, the loading time is quite important to me, so uh, yeah, um, I'm trying to keep the loading times as short as possible. I was actually thinking about removing unused uh, repaints for, for some of the rolling stock, so that way I can reduce the loading time a bit more. I'm actually quite um, trying um, to keep an eye out for performance as well because with such a big, big program project coming up with our um, trying to rebuild London in, in this scale uh, I fear that 
the performance um, issues will put an end to this uh, series earlier than I I'd like to. So right now I'm trying to optimize at least my mods and the mods I'm using. I'm trying to optimize them as good as possible for uh, performance. That way I can uh, keep playing this map for a while. As you probably have noticed already uh, with me detailing the sections. I'm starting off with all um, with a particular uh, track, particularly line in, uh, that I want to detail and I'm decreasing the level of detail the further away we get from the tracks. So uh, I need to make trade-offs, I can't uh, detail everything. So, so uh, areas of London that are closer to uh, many tracks will definitely get more attention. Here for the car park I'm mainly using uh, Matt Hatter's uh, nice British car park assets as well as the vanilla cars which someone made available um, as assets to place as, way, as well. I'm hesitating to uh, download more different cars because um, of the performance as well. Be um, I'm not I wouldn't say trusting, but I don't have the time to check every mod I use um, if they uh, did their um, job right uh, with regards to um, optimizing the performance. Maybe a few, word, um, few words or few insights there from the modding. So uh, what you usually do if you do an asset or a building or a train you make your main model and then you add different level of detailing extra models which have this um, decreasing level of details so you're basically removing triangles which wouldn't be pos um, which wouldn't be visible uh, from that distance anyway so the further away you get from the object the objects actually get swapped for a similar um, similar model which has less details. This way um, it allows models to actually create quite detailed models of trains. This way on the highest level of detail we can actually bring um, train simulator quality models into transport fever and then we just equip them with less detailed level of detail um, LOD models I call them um, LODs uh, yes and um, they are quite um, important for uh, uh, for the performance because the less triangles your GPU has to render the, the better they perform but it's not only the triangles it's also the textures and the materials your models are built with and the less of all these things your GPU has to calculate the better the game will perform and yeah um, uh, as I <laughs> already stressed enough uh, I, I try to keep my eye out for performance uh, in this series that way I can really get him um, get as far as possible with my recreation attempt of London. Another thing is with my London houses as you just saw on the time lapse, I um, try to give them uh, as many uh, um, configurable options so that way you can place down many houses, many terraced houses in a row quickly because London has a lot of them and I can't be bothered to place them all down by hand and give them a garden and detail them so that way they can be placed down quite efficiently. I also programmed them in a way so they spawn um, people and pedestrians. They are unfortunately not able to spawn cars 
which is quite sad because uh, the streets will look quite empty, which is quite the opposite of what London streets normally look like. But um, at least I'm, I, yeah, that's good that I'm actually able to, uh, that they spawn pedestrians and that way they populate my lines and the city. Maybe something you've noticed in the episode before that uh, I haven't spawned any uh, any in-game towns. I completely want to play this game without any in-game towns because they, the AM, the town building AI would start randomly building up my entire city, my stuff, and I want to do it all manually. And partially because I don't like the way they build and I'm not able as a modder to restrict them to uh, only use my British houses for example so that's also one of the reasons I haven't um, uh, I made the houses as assets and not as uh, spawnable by the AI because I think they would like terraced houses would look rather weird if they were spawned individually between the vanilla houses. So yeah, I know I have a lot of work ahead of me when I want to uh, fill every um, spot with some houses, some buildings. But I think it will be worth it in the end. And I hope we can get a nice map, which somehow hopefully looks like London. At least it has the track layout of London. And I'm currently modeling lots of London skyscrapers, so I can rebuild the skyline of London. And this way, um, hopefully in my future shots and cinematics, you'll be able to see uh, my version of the London skyline, which hopefully is, will be close to the original. Uh, yeah, um, if you haven't seen them yet, check them out on the Steam Workshop. Uh, maybe, maybe we can have a glimpse in the next episode at the new skyline. It's far from finished yet, but but for now it will at least look good in the background. Yeah, well, and another thing I wanted to discuss with you in this episode is uh, the format of my episodes, actually. So I'm experimenting with lots of different things so so the first episode was an, an intro followed by uh, me showing the map and then uh, some cinematics and um, right now um, the second is quite uh, different so so I do do a time lapse of my building although this might be a boring time lapse because I'm just placing down buildings there's no particular interesting building technique I'm using uh, to achieve what I'm doing, but um, this gives me the time to moderate it a little bit, uh, talk about some uh, insights that I can give from a modder's perspective as well. So please let me know in the comments uh, if you like what I'm doing. Uh, if you have anything that um, could be changed, I'm still experimenting and, and trying to figure things out. And, and your feedback is crucial to that, so I can uh, deliver you the content you want to see. And yeah, but I was thinking of um, making a mix of building videos like usual Transport Fever Let's Plays, but also bringing in my insights as a model, uh, try to explain at least some basic concepts. They um, are not intended as tutorials or anything like that. Uh, for that, I recommend uh, you to uh, um, to watch my, my live streams on Twitch. I should probably put a link of uh, my, my Twitch page in the video description as well. So. Right now, um, I'm trying to live stream my modding every Thursday, and it's intended. I'm, I'm not sure about the audience yet, but it, I, I try to make it 
informative for someone who's not modeling or is not planning to, but also um, to show off my workflow of doing things um, so other mothers in the community can learn from it. So, so I try to make it a mixture, but for, for um, my YouTube channel, uh, at least for, for the series of London Rebuild, the target is definitely not to give tutorials on modding, just giving, yeah, just to give more insight on what happens in the community as well uh, and highlight some, some good work uh, some of my modding colleagues do. So yeah, please let me know in the comments if you like the time-lapse with the um, videos or if you prefer if I'm walking around and uh, showing you around the map. I will, I think I will definitely keep the cinematic section, section in the end. I um, uh, quite enjoy making them and uh, quite enjoy watching them myself, uh, really. So uh, that gives uh, a different angle on, on my on, on my build so I can finish a section and make a time lapse out of it that has something that um, has something nice to it. I'm, I'm enjoying that a lot. Uh, but yeah, if you, um, for example, I'm, I'm, I'm unsure about uh, the speed of the uh, time lapse. It, it, it is quite a large sector I'm covering there. Uh, so I, um, but I try to keep the videos within 30 minutes or something, plus minus five. Uh, but yeah, let me know if you prefer to see longer uh, time-lapsed videos, if you, if I should keep them short and focused on the interesting parts. I will try to incorporate all your feedback. There's one downside to the cinematics, um, the way I produce them, at least. So, so I'm not able to incorporate any in-game sounds of the trains into my time-lapse videos. Which is unfortunate, the, the modders put lots of work into making them sound properly and I can't record that sound because the way of uh, the, in, uh, the video tool in Transport Fever works. It's quite an interesting thing though, uh, the, the video tool, okay, everyone has that, that's not a mod. You can enable um, with the settings and you get a free camera for screenshots. Um, you can remove the game UI that way, so you can get nice shots of your, your favorite parts of your builds. But um, the um, the camera, uh, the what's the camera? The uh, video recording part is also quite interesting. There you can um, define the way the um, a path your camera takes. A bit like flying a drone, you define from where to where it should go and how the camera angle should face. And then it um, computes uh, screenshots, basically. So it unpauses the game for one frame and then makes another screenshot. That way you get constant frame rates. For example, I am uh, running uh, the game on the highest settings for the time-lapse videos. However, my uh, GPU doesn't support the highest level of detail, uh, so it's um, lagging a lot. So I'm turning it down for for building, but then for the uh, for the time lapse videos in the end, I um, turn it back up to the max settings, uh, so that way you can enjoy the highest quality in in the videos. I also got a mod for. Um, a, an increased viewing distance uh, because of um, the skyline I teased earlier so I want to have my city of London skyline visible from everywhere from the map at least for, for my cinematics mm. so yeah it um, uh, will be interesting to play around with this in future episodes uh, and see what results I can achieve uh, when, when for the cinematics. Going back to what I'm actually doing in, in the time-lapse video, I try to uh, at least make 
all um, make a stripe around the tracks. So uh, when you do a cap ride, you um, got a nice view uh, from, from the track layout and you don't see any uh, plain green grass areas. So, so you get the feeling when you do a cap ride in, in that area that, that you're actually in a big city. A bit like what, what they do when they uh, program um, the the, uh, the train simulator games, they also um, they also detail only stripes of the map. Uh, and yeah, I'm, I put in um, at the end of the cinematics. I also put in a cab ride from Hack, uh, no from Dalston Kingsland down to Hackney Wick, which is the most detailed section. I'm not going into Stratford now because Stratford is quite unfinished, and I probably do a whole new episode on, on detailing Stratford, uh, which will be a challenge. I'm partially looking forward to it, otherwise I'm, on the other side I'm afraid of it, because uh, it has some really interesting track layouts and track detailing going on. But for that um, we also need uh, the DLR. The DLR, um, there are no DLR models yet on the workshop, which is unfortunate. But uh, so I don't, um, I haven't done the DLR network yet. But uh, maybe there will be in the future. And until then, I'm, I'm postponed Stratford because the DLR plays a nice role uh, in in the whole track layout of Stratford. So here um, I'm placing the houses again, and they are not quite accurate. It's not the same style of houses there, and so on. But uh, I'm I'm still in the process of making these houses, so so there will be more variety in the future. But uh, I need to start somewhere, and no, I'm I'm trying to re um, create the feeling of the area more than the exact house locations, and um. So, so I have the um, the British terraced houses for that, and they work quite well, surprisingly well, with the uh, Soviet uh, multi-story buildings, which um, is quite interesting. It it, it really um, mimics the feel of East London a lot, where uh, you actually can um, see these nice uh, British style neighborhoods with um, the terraced houses which are built mostly before the world war and then you see the uh, ugly I say ugly but maybe some people like them I don't know maybe in, in, in 20 or 30 years or maybe hundred more, more like 100 to 200 years these um, buildings will be interesting again but yeah, um, they are basically just uh, after um, cheap after war housing um, to replace them um, to to fill in the uh, blank spots and, and replace destroyed buildings. Uh, yeah, but um, it it really uh, gives the East London feel, where uh, which consists of of some some modern buildings in between like um especially this area and, and the area more south i at least i know the area more south better my land and bethnal green everything south of victoria park uh, because i lived there for a year but um there's a lot a lot lot of investment going on right now so so there are a lot of uh residential blocks built by big investors and then rented out which um yeah is quite nice um, i'd like to live in one of these modern buildings but uh, they tend to be quite expensive however i've been told that i'm um, with the current corona situation uh house prices at least in east london uh dropped by a uh, quite quite a significant margin 
a good friend of mine uh, managed to get a hand of uh, a hand on uh, one of these modern new flats in East London for for quite a good price. I'm not sure if this trend continues or if it, if they go and um, the prices go up again. Uh, but yeah, uh, only the future knows. Here in the picture right now you see my attempt on Homerton station. Um, all the stations on the line really are quite typical London overground station. Uh, so I was thinking it's maybe worth making a uh, overground station mod. I, I just haven't got the time um, to start this project yet. And there, there's so many other things I, I'd like to mod, so I need to prioritize. But yeah, uh, I, I think at some point in the future I will at least do more different uh, platform and station mods in, in the same um, style I did with my King's Cross mod uh, with all the different modules and platforms in the UK style. I'm already getting tired of seeing the uh, uh, CCTV poles, the, the black thingies on the side of the platform, as well as the uh, glass fence around the modern King's Cross uh, platforms. They're really designed to be the platforms of King's Cross Station and not a generic British version, version you can use everywhere. And yeah, therefore we, yeah. at some point I need to invest some time into making proper a, a proper generic British station module mod a modular station mod I think we are almost done with um, this section I'm just removing the grass in between the tracks uh, just looks weird having the, like a little bit grass is might be realistic but uh, the way the game spawns the grass in between the tracks just looks weird from uh, the cat perspective. I, I still have them... Um, I, I, I got really annoyed by the grass when I watched my cinematics from the last episode. So I already removed the grass over there at this section as well. And you know I'm doing it here. I'm also trying to place uh, the correct speed uh, restriction signs. Uh, I'm using um, open street map, uh, open railway map for that, which shows me the speed restrictions of most of um, the railway lines in the UK. I unfortunately can't, uh, so, so I'm using um, Killakan's track mods here, which um, only um, supports speed restrictions of uh, 75 miles an hour so I uh, with the third rail mod uh, with Matt had this third rail tracks well it's a he, he didn't do the tracks but he uh, added um, the different track variety so you can actually have um, place down tracks with speed restriction of I think five miles per hour increments so um, with the third rail tracks, I try to place the um, them in the realistic um, with the realistic real line speeds, but with, with the these tracks, I unfortunately can't. But I, I heard rumors that um, at least at some point, Matt Etto is looking into this and trying to make the same thing he did for the third rail tracks and then for Killercon's UK tracks. But I think that's it for today. Give this video a like and subscribe for further updates on this series. And I will leave you with some um, nice cinematics in the end. And the cap ride going uh, all the way from uh, Dalston Kingsland to Hackney Wick. I hope you enjoy it and, and see you next week.